Also on a phone line right now, we reached out to, uh, once again, um, a congressman from the 6th Congressional District. Um, no, it's actually the 8th. Raja Krishnamurthy joins us now from, uh, I guess, Washington, D.C. I presume that's where you are, Congressman? Good afternoon, John. Yes, thank you. You're in uh, D.C. as well. I've been asking various colleagues of yours representing Illinois, where were they and what did, how did they hear the news this morning? What was your connection to the story? Well, um, I, I got a phone call very early. Uh, it's it's funny. I, I just left the gym and I was on my way to. Um, I'm a member of the bipartisan uh, a group called the Bipartisan Working Group, and uh, ironically, uh, on my way there, I got the phone call saying that, uh, you know, Congressman Scalise had been shot as well as others. Have you heard any uh, information about his status? We have heard conflicting reports earlier today. It sounded like he was stable, but. One of your colleagues told us moments ago that he hears it's been um, upgraded to critical, I believe was the condition that he said. I don't know, John. Um, I I do. uh, I I was, you know, I heard from the speaker uh, actually um, earlier today that um, he thought the prognosis was good, um, but I don't know what has happened in the uh, intervening time. Were you planning on, are you planning on going to the baseball game then? I understand that's still going to be on for Thursday night. Yes, I, I plan to drop by. You know, I I, I, I I do think that everybody in your audience, uh, um, I hope that they can keep the victims of the shooting in their thoughts and prayers today. Obviously, Congressman Scalise is now uh, dealing with his wounds. Um, you know, there are a couple of Capitol Police officers who were also shot um, an aide, as well as a former aide, uh, to a member of Congress, and I, I understand that one, the former aide um, is struggling for his life. Uh, he's fighting for his life right now. He's going into uh, yet another surgery. So um, today, I hope that uh, we can all keep them and their families in our thoughts and prayers. We are lucky that this wasn't worse than it was, aren't we? Lucky's not. We're the very right lucky. Yeah. We're well. We're look. The Capitol Police. Um, and for that matter, all of law enforcement deserves our gratitude today. I, you know, they put their lives on the line this morning to to save the people who were on the field. And uh, without them, uh, many lives would have been lost. I, I don't know if you heard, but uh, something like 50 to 100 rounds were uh, shot off uh, by by the uh, by the perpetrator. And uh, it's a miracle that. Uh, Lives weren't lost in, instantaneously at that at that time. So, how has life in Washington D.C. changed then? Um, were committee hearings held today? Were you working as a congressman today? Um, so, votes were canceled, um, and committee hearings have res- resumed for the afternoon. Um, but votes were canceled. Instead, we had two uh, special sessions. One was a uh, a security briefing um, at which we learned. Uh, some more details about the uh, actual shooting incident. Um, And then the other uh, was a session basically to come together and uh, remember, you know, what happened today. And, um, you know, quite frankly, there was a call call for the rhetoric to simmer down Mm -hmm. um, on all sides. And I think that was an entirely appropriate, um, uh, you know, call to action, so to speak. And um, I think today we should obviously remember the victims in our thoughts and prayers and, and hope that they pull through and, and wish them a speedy recovery. But tomorrow, I hope that we draw some lessons from this, including that, you know, we have to remember first and foremost that we're all Americans. Um, and, and you know, we um, we have to treat each other with respect and dignity and civility, and we can disagree without being disagreeable. Um and I think that is hopefully what we put into practice, uh, you know, as soon as possible. Well, this isn't about Donald Trump, but I'll just start there because he's the president. And from the president on down to a talk show host in Chicago, I think you're right. It's been a very contentious time. We all have our positions and the rhetoric and the sort of behavior is, I think, disappointing all of us at every level every day. And there's no room for this. And by the way, I trust you would agree that if a crazy person does something like this or an angry person does something like this, that's on them. That's their action. But we don't need to give them any more reason to behave that way. Stake out your principles, but let's 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 not do anything to drive those on the margins to some sort of violent act. 
That's absolutely correct. Um, I, I agree 100 percent with what you said, John. And, I, you know, the one thing is that um, yeah, I've been I've been a congressman for six months now. You, you know, I was elected in, in November. But one thing that you notice very quickly in Washington, D.C., and, and perhaps for that matter in other places as well, is that, um, you know, uh, people are they, they get attention for conflict. Um, and for, you know, using very uh, tough rhetoric on each other, um, so, you know, as, as I heard the other day, you know, uh, sometimes um, uh, the, the, the media doesn't really like to cover hugs and handshakes. Instead, uh, they like hand grenades. And, you know, that's what drives some people to, uh, you know, really uh, go after each other in, in vitriolic terms. And, you know, that just can't be the way forward. I, there's just too much important stuff that we got to do in a bipartisan way, whether it's, you know, health care or infrastructure yeah, yeah, or yeah. anything else that really matters to working families. Yeah, I would hope that that's the takeaway. Too bad it takes this. But so if you're in another committee meeting tomorrow or if there's a vote coming up, use this as a reason to stop all the contentiousness, comp- compromise, compromise, get stuff done, you know. Right. And and, and that was actually, um, I think, the sentiment that came out of the sessions this morning, but also, you know, like I said, we had this bipartisan working group meeting. Um, I, I'm, I co-founded something called the Middle Class Jobs Caucus with uh, a Republican member, and that's what we try to put into practice uh, as much as possible. Let's try to find the places where we can agree and start from there, as opposed to find the places where we disagree and just kind of hurl Uh, insults at each other. And the idea is that if you can start from the places where we might agree, who knows, maybe we can build a little bit of trust uh, and maybe a relationship and use that to then tackle some of the more, you know, some of the more challenging issues. Um, So that's that's what I'm hoping. um, And that's what I uh, intend to put in practice as much as I possibly can. Good luck to you, Raj. Uh, Let's uh, visit again. I haven't met you in studio yet. You've jumped on with us a few times, sometimes for less serious occasions than this, but uh, I'd love to meet you in studio sometime, too. Absolutely, John. Thank you for bringing attention to uh, what happened today, and hopefully um, we use this as a, uh, uh, you know, obviously I hope that we all can keep uh, those victims in our thoughts and prayers and and, and, um, at the same time use it as a teachable moment. Raja Krishnamurthy is a representative from the 8th Congressional District, a Democrat here in Illinois. John Williams here. Thank you, Steve.